Hi, my name is Dr. Catherine Hughes from Crime Psych. I'm a criminal psychologist and I run a business that enables me to bring knowledge to everybody, not just those over our university. I do this by producing a range of blogs and vlogs and free online courses, but I also run slightly more in-depth courses, which are both available online and face-to-face. -face. You don't need any previous qualifications to learn with me. So have a look at my website and see if you can make it to an event or learn with me online in your own time. This particular video is looking at John Warboys, who was born in June of 1957. He is a British convicted sex offender known as the Black Cab Rapist. And he earned that title when he was convicted in 2009 for 12 attacks on women. I'm going to be doing an analysis of the psychological factors which were involved in his offending. As with all of the psychological analysis videos that I do, I'll begin by taking a look at his earlier life to see if there are any factors which may have contributed to his offending. Warboys was born in Enfield and he left school with only a few qualifications. He held several jobs such as milkman, uh, junior dairy manager and security guard. Between 1987 and 2000, Warboys worked as a stripper using Terry the Minder as a pseudonym. He also directed and appeared in pornographic films. He used to hire out his flat in Poole in Dorset for making pornographic films and wasn't able to find out if his preoccupation with sex goes before or came before 1987. He would have been 30 years old when he became a stripper. Warboys admitted to his psychiatrist that he had been fantasising about his crimes since about 1986 and he was motivated by hostility towards women. The sex attacks that he's been convicted of began in around the year 2000 but many victims may not have come forward yet. It's very difficult for me to find out precise information about his life prior to 1986, so it's not clear what's caused this hostility towards women. During his trial, Warboys claimed to have engaged in banter with women to get their attention. He said that this was due to him not getting attention and cuddles when he was growing up. It's clear from his involvement in stripping and pornography that he did enjoy attention being lavished upon him. My first thought on hearing this was that he might be a narcissist. He married during the period where he was stripping and involved in pornography and he wed in 1991. However, the couple split up after eight years. She'd claimed that Warboys had sexually assaulted her daughter and that he confessed to following home and assaulting another young woman at that time. Warboys began working as a taxi driver in Poole at this time and he was involved in pornography as well. He became a London cab driver. He picked up women and fares late at night. He used to tell some of these women that he was celebrating coming into a large amount of money. He'd say things like he won on the lottery or he'd won on the horses or at a casino or something and he had a bag full of cash to back his claim up. He used to show the women the bag full of, carry a bag full of cash. He would suggest to these women that they have a small drink with him to help him to celebrate his win. But the drink was drugged with sedatives. After the drugs had taken their effect, he would rape or sexually assault the women. The women often had very little or no memory of what had happened to them. And in some cases, he offered women money to have sex with him. As with the other psychological analysis videos that I've done, I'm not going to describe the crimes themselves in a lot of detail. There are plenty of websites already available with all of this information already on. Besides, most of the crimes are exactly the same as I've just described. He used a confidence trickster approach with the women that he preyed on. He did clearly have an inflated sense of self and was confident enough in himself to be able to trick these women. He saw his own needs and sexual gratification as being more important than the women's rights. Again, this suggests to me that he does have some narcissistic traits. 
The first report to police concerning suspicious incidents experienced by women in black cabs dated from about 2002. Over a period of six years, 14 women between the ages of, th of 18 and 34 complained to the police of assault or other worrying experiences in a taxi. The police initially, however, failed to link them together. Warboys was arrested for sexual assault of a 19-year-old student in 2007, but he was released on bail because he said that the girl had been drunk and had kissed him as she left his cab. Once this was confirmed by CCTV, the police released him. In December 2007, a 26-year-old woman made a complaint about a cab driver who drugged and raped her. But a DNA sample wasn't matched to war boys. In January 2008, a 29-year-old insurance broker made a similar report to Essex Police. In February 2008, there were three more complaints to the police, all of which were very similar. The police then recognised that they were dealing with a serial rapist and eventually Warboys was arrested. Warboys knew that this would be a difficult crime for anybody to prove, especially if the drugs he was given made the victim unconscious and unable to remember what happened to them. His inherent narcissistic traits made him believe that he could never be caught for these crimes. He used to say that it, it was their fault and he blamed them for being drunk. And this is what we would now call gaslighting. Police found a rape kit in the boot of Warboy's uh, car. This contained champagne and miniature plastic glasses, gloves, a torch, vibrators, condoms, sleeping tablets and an ashtray used to crush the drugs. In a safe in Warboy's garage, the police found handwritten notes outlining his planned explanations if he was questioned again following the 2007 arrest. These papers weren't used in court, however, because he claimed to have written these for his solicitor for the previous attack. This is very egotistical behaviour. Even in the face of evidence being found, he tried to find a way to explain it away. He was convicted of these crimes and after further evidence had been found, despite pleading not guilty. As I mentioned earlier, Warboys said that he only engaged in banter with the women to get their attention due to not getting attention and cuddles when he was growing up. He said that any sex that he had was consensual. Despite this, he was convicted and sentenced. Not only was this a case of a narcissist who used women for his own gratification and did not give any consideration to these women, it was also a failing of the police. The police held the view that a black cab driver couldn't possibly have committed these attacks. The police also had some biases towards the women because they'd been drinking. The commander of the Greenwich Police was moved on due to failings in an inquiry and an unrelated murder investigation. A spokeswoman for Women Against Rape said, we hope that um, some senior officers will face dismissal over the, this and similar cases. The handling of Warboy's case was brought before the Independent Police Complaints Commission, who, con who concluded that proper investigations could have prevented some of the attacks. Five officers had complaints against them upheld, but were all allowed to remain in their jobs. This decision was criticised by one of the victims and her lawyers who say that she was laughed at by the police when she reported her assault. By October 2010, the Metropolitan Police received 102 additional complaints from women in London and Dorset and believe that in 13 years as a taxi driver, he could have drugged and attacked more than 100 female passengers. In 2018, Warboys was to be released from prison. However, victims appealed the decision with the Supreme Court and won. The BBC reports that they saw a report that said Warboys still had a sexual preoccupation, a sense of sexual entitlement and a belief that rape is acceptable. 
I don't believe that a prison sentence would be enough to get a narcissist to change their ways and believe that they're not entitled to take what they want from people. Warboys has since been charged with further attacks and sentenced to two life sentences with a minimum term of six years for attacking four women. It was revealed in court that Warboys had confessed to a psychologist that he had pushed alcohol on 90 women, of which a quarter had been drugged. After sentencing, a lawyer who, represent, who re represented 11 of Warboys' victims said that today's sentencing will be welcome to Warboys' many victims only if it really means life. Warboys is an exceptionally manipulative and dangerous individual and he'll always pose a risk to women and he can never be allowed back into society. Thank you for taking the time to watch this psychological analysis video. I do hope that you've learned something from it. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.